as long as you have 100, 100 million different purposes, you're going to see a very bobbly, discombobulated world of victims and victimizers and pain and pleasure, duality. But that as you let, as you start following the single purpose, your judgments of the world will fade away because the duality literally doesn't exist on the screen. The duality is the split in the mind between the right mind and the wrong mind. So every time, I mean, that's the way that the mind dealt with the split. I mean, if, if you come back to the metaphysics of it, imagine this. In the kingdom of heaven, the mind is whole, it's singular, it's one. It has nothing but integrity and union. And once it believes in this crazy idea of, of the ego, now there are two completely irreconcilable thought systems. The Holy Spirit's thought system of love and the ego's thought system of fear. And they're in the same mind. This mind is used to union. Now it's got two complete, there's not one single point where the Holy Spirit's thought system touches the ego. They're completely unlike each other in every way. So the mind can't stand this, so what does it do? It projects it out onto the world. That's where the world of duality came from. That's why we've got hot and cold and fast and slow and big and little and male and female and high and low. I mean, it could go on forever. The world seems to be a world of duality and extremes. And really, what it comes down to is when you can pull it back, when you can start to see that the, the conflict is just within my wrong mind, that the conflict just comes about when I'm trying to hold on to the ego's thought system, then you don't project, then there's no longer a need to project. You can let go of the ego. So let's take a, we can get into real theoretical stuff here. Let's bring it back to a real concrete example because we need to keep doing that so we can be clear. Mm -hmm. I um, had an experience a while back where I had a grievance and I wouldn't let go of it. And so I had this, this inner dialogue where it's like, you know, you got to let go of this. You know, it's like, no. Mm -hmm. You've always had in the past, you know. No, I'm not, you know, I couldn't. So I'm doing this with it, and then uh, it just came like that. It's like, it's because this grievance is my identity. You know. I'm this, I'm not that. You say this was I'm not that, I'm this. It happened to me yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, I was like, whoa. And so it's been real sticky for me for a while. Yeah. Yeah, once I start thinking that I've got it all set, well, I get hit. <laughs> I wonder why I'm depressed, I wonder why I'm doing that. <laughs> you hit the, that's the key chord is identity. I mean, that's what it really comes down to. But I've noticed all these years, every time I've had an upset, if I've really sat down and gone within, it's been my identity. You know, my identity attachment to being a, an intellectual. You know, my identity attachment to being a Cincinnati Reds fan. <laughs> or, being comes a, and, or being a good parent. Yeah, it, it, parent, <laughs> brother, it's just yeah. family kind of thing. I mean, identity attachments to maleness and femaleness. You know, that's you could do a whole workshop on on male female seeming struggles and, and everything. You know, the whole thing about equality. And, and what we do is we're still looking for solutions again out in the world of form and equal pay and quotas and everything when really the solution comes from a whole different perception of the whole world. You can see where as long as we're as long as we believe there's this <coughs> conflict going on out in the world, whether it's abortion or gun control or you know the male female thing or I mean just pick one of a zillion issues. Those are all ego distractive devices. The ego is saying, take a side. Take one side. Good. <laughs> as soon as you're on one side, then you can be against the other side. You see how, how it, or, or like you are saying with identity attachments, as soon as, as soon as it's me, this identity person against you, that other person, you know, it's important to be right, it's important to you know, hold on. As long as I'm into that image, defending that image of who I think I am, it's painful. I mean, that's where the grievance comes in. Just think, if we quit doing that, think of how many talk show hosts we out of business. <laughs> <laughs> the world is out of business. <laughs> Literally. I can, you know, and there's so many things that theoretically I can really understand and 
it, but then, you know, at times when you think of the real application, I sort of drift in and out, you know, and it seems like some days I, you know, I, I, as far as, uh, you know, as far as forgiveness and everything, you know, yeah, I, can, I can do that or I can understand it. And then, but you get down to judgments and you think, if you can't judge anything, it almost seems like you can't roll in it. I mean, you can't even be alive because you have to judge. You know, how do you just do away with all of it, yeah. you know? I mean, it, it's not just a decision to do away with it, is it? I mean, there well, has to be some way to apply Yeah, this. let's address that one part of your question where, you know, how do you live or how do you survive? I mean, that was my thing, was that, as I went along and started really plunging into the Course and meditation and everything, you know, I was, I had some moments of fear, because I was getting guidance, like one point I got guidance in line with the whole career thing was, was, for example, to delete my resume. Well, my resume was my security. My resume was my past, my image. You know, literally, it, it was kind of like, you know, and, and take it off the word processor, not just throw the name, but just, <laughs> I spent ten years of building that up, all the workshops, all the grade point averages, da 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 da. But, but you know, I could tell at that point in my life that, that it was one of those trust issue things too. That, that I didn't know. I mean, I had to trust that there was something greater than me that was going to run the show, that literally would be able to judge through me, and and be able to tell me where to go, who to see. You know, would literally be able to more and more even speak through me. But I had to trust that there was something else because otherwise. That's my security, you know. Um, if if we give up our, our judgments, we believe that those that's that's what keeps us going in this world is is our good judgment. That's why we go for more education. That's why we keep going for retraining, and that's why we constantly watch the news, keep up with this. Oh, got to move my house. Oh, got to move to a better neighborhood because the crime's starting to grow over here. Oh, gambling on the river now. Let's move out. You know, that our judgment is always. The ego's judgment is always trying to say, change something on the screen to make it safer. And the Holy Spirit is just saying, trust me, you know, I'll guide you. We're, you're in a maze, but every time you come to a turn, you got to turn left or right, I'll be there. I'll tell you, go left here, go right, go left. <laughs> you literally, I mean, that's how I feel in my life. It's like, it's, it's, I've gotten specific kinds of guidances that when I've let go of all my investment on how it should go, something real clear has come through. And, and that's the only way that we can really go and follow the Course, is to really trust that that's there. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says, is evaluative. In other words, the Holy Spirit does, does judge for us while we believe we're here in the world. There are definitely, as long as you believe you're here in the world, there are definitely decisions to be made. You know, there's no way, and usually lots of them. And so, He's just, he's not kind of saying, go blank, you know, he, he's kind of saying, hold on to my purpose, remember that your function is forgiveness. Try to, in every encounter, try to hold on to that. The reason I'm here at the laundry is for forgiveness. Clothes will get washed, but holy encounters, forgiveness is my purpose. The reason I'm here at the restaurant, here comes the waitress over, is for forgiveness. Is to really look at the, you know, waitress in the eye, and to really connect. And yes, they'll still get, food will be eaten, waitresses get tipped, and we'll pay. you know, even when I go to my job, it doesn't matter what the job is, you know, what's my purpose? You know, am I a data processor? Wait a minute, forgiveness. <laughs> my function is forgiveness. Now you can tell that, that there's conflict that goes on in the mind, because the next thing the ego usually comes up with, well, I work at such and such a job, you know, here. I'm different from most people. I've got a job where I have, I'm a manager, i got to judge people, and blah, blah, blah. You know, the Holy Spirit takes us right where we are. It, you know, He doesn't say we have to go sit under the eucalyptus tree for enlightenment. This is a course that's very practical. And wherever you seem to be, whatever your job situation, relationship situation, you know, if you just make a commitment, make a determination that I'm going to turn my life over to you, I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to this purpose of, of forgiveness. You know, hold on to this purpose of healing, that will have immediate changes. I noticed when I first started doing it in the grocery store, mm -hmm. that my whole agenda, I, I noticed they had a whole agenda of how I could quickly, how time was a big factor. Mm -hmm. Price, you know, all these things that you see, you got a whole little script, grocery store, 
scenario. And Jesus is kind of saying, just hold it off there to the side. That's right. Forgiveness. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's really simple. It, it, it doesn't seem that way at times because when you're starting off, once again, you have all these functions. You split your, your whole life into all these functions. But if you just practice with holding, you know, that, that one function, it'll start to grow and gain momentum. And then the more it happens, I mean, it's an adventure of a lifetime. I'll, I'll guarantee it when you start to, to follow that. Well, see, theoretically, again, I can follow all that. But then, how do you apply? I mean, I can see how you apply forgiveness in a grocery store if uh, if you're standing in a long line and you don't become impatient. You just, you know, forgiveness is. But what does it have to do? How how do you apply forgiveness as far as the fact that you have to choose? You have to know crises and you have to choose. And what you have to say, well, Time factor, uh, how, time factor. How, how to get in there. Yeah, yeah. How specifically? How does how does forgiveness come in come into play in that everyday mm -hmm. situation where you're not actually confronting someone who's uh, who you're projecting on? You know, these are items, or this is um, these are just situation. You know, you know what? I, yeah, if you run it down to the mind, like, if, suppose you have a real, suppose you're a real good bargain hunter and you can price, we'll say, you know, to use a specific example. If you really get down to what's behind that a lot of times, if you really follow it way down into the mind, there's the scarcity principle. And what's the big deal of pricing? And let, if you believe you're, you're the Holy Christ and you're abundant and you have everything, well, pricing kind of fades away, you know, as, as important. But you can see how the belief in scarcity is down there. That's something in your mind that... It has to be looked at. Green paper strips went, green paper strips came, you know, that's what Jesus called money in the course. You know, it's like the, the thing about, he's pretty casual, it seems big time down here he calls it green paper strips, you know, a little metal disc. But, but you can see how when you really, when you get into the flow of it, to just hold on to forgiveness, yes, what's my function, what's my purpose, then that helps everything kind of just comes, in, the pieces of the puzzle just come together. So, you know, that's what makes it, it flow. And there's another part in the workbook where Jesus says that your happiness and your function are one. That, that by holding on to the Holy Spirit's purpose and, and remembering your function, you will be indescribably happy. You know? Now that's not what the ego believes. The ego believes that if I get this better relationship, if I get this better job, if I get to live in a better place, you know, if I get my body built up better, if my, car, if my cholesterol level goes down, <laughs> one, of, one of zillions of things that I'll be happy. And the Course makes it so simple. It just says your happiness comes from fulfilling your function. You know? That makes it simple. Now, the ego will once again say, you don't want to do God's will, you know, because you'll, the ego tells us that God's will is, is pain and suffering because it believes that God is a, God, a vengeful God. And so it teaches us that if I do God's will, I'm going to have to sacrifice things. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm really going to have to sacrifice. And the, it really is the flip side. But then it makes sense that if, if the Holy Spirit is going to use all the skills and everything we have in this world, that He would, He would just retranslate our perception and just use our skills and abilities in a way that would be most helpful. It's not a matter of, you know. Well, I learned how to drive a car. Now I'm going to have to unlearn how to drive a car, unlearn how to grocery shop. You know, it's not that he's going to take away the skills that we learn, but he's just going to, he's saying, give them to me. Give your skills to me. Give, if you have speaking ability, if you have writing ability, if you have artistic ability, you know, whatever the abilities may be, you know, if you, if you just shift purposes and give them to the Holy Spirit, then it will make you indescribable. <coughs> and to me, that makes a lot of sense. 